So let's talk about book number eight on my booker quest to read and review all of the booker books. That is The Sweetness of Water by Nathan Harris. Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So I have not seen a lot of conversation surrounding this book uh, compared to the other books that are on the short list or long list. Well, maybe short list. By the time this comes out, the short list will be out, but I just don't know what it is yet. I'm assuming this book's not on it, sorry. But I think that many people would agree with that just because of what I said, like there's not a lot of people talking about this one. And now that I've read it, I can kind of understand why. So this is going to be another one of my review videos from this list that does not include like a breakdown of themes, but is instead just talking about the book and my general feelings on it as a whole. So I guess just like a regular review. <laughs> Honestly, I have like a weird amount of love in my heart for No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood because that was the first book I did this with where like I didn't break it down by theme and that has made my life a lot easier. Like going into a review video and being like, okay, you don't have to like be as anal retentive about it as you normally are. <laughs> Let's start with the general synopsis of the book. So this is set right after the Civil War when in the US when the um, emancipation of slaves had just happened. Unless you're Texas, in which case it didn't happen for another two years because everything is terrible. It's all terrible. Um, but if you want to learn more about that, uh, then check out the website for Juneteenth, especially if you don't know what Juneteenth is. So this, the Civil War has just ended, emancipation has just happened, and we're following uh, kind of two groups of people, they, they become one. There's a lot of different perspectives. Like you can get any perspective from any of the people that are in like the core group. And the people that make that up are uh, George and his wife, Isabella, who are white and I think elderly or at least older. Uh, they have a child that's fully grown. George seems more old, um, but that being said, like, their child's not that old. Like, he, he's younger than me, I'm pretty sure. So maybe George just has physical limitations. I don't know. But they're an older couple, we'll, we'll call them. And then we've got uh, Caleb, their son, who has, um, is essentially like a deserter of the war. Um, he's also in love with his best friend, who also went to the war, uh, August. They are, of course, two Confederate soldiers. And then we've got uh, Prentice and Landry, who are two recently freed slaves from uh, a neighboring farm to George and Isabella's. That's like the core group that the story is about. Um, and you can get a perspective from any of those five characters throughout the book, like it'll jump around. And basically, uh, Prentice and Landry happen upon the farm like after they've been freed they're kind of like wandering around and enjoying the ability to do nothing for the first time and they end up coming to like stay on the farm and help uh george and isabella with their peanut farm specifically uh at which they're being paid for and so i think that that's kind of an interesting thing like seeing them go from you know one farm to the farm like right next door uh, but the wide difference that that makes even though distance wise it's not that far like the distance in mentality and the way that they are treated uh is immense you know it's it's a huge difference so i thought that that was like a an interesting thing to think about that like not so far away from where they physically are for a lot of the book they were slaves, like they were enslaved there. So they come to stay with George and Isabella and that's kind of how it is for most of the story. Uh, then a lot of the conflict comes from the town not really uh, agreeing with, you know, of course, just because like emancipation happened, just because of the Emancipation Pro Proclamation, that doesn't mean everybody was like, oh, okay, everything, <laughs> we're not the worst people in the world now, we're not bigots anymore, ha ha ha. It was still really bad. Um, and George and Isabella are kind of a beacon of light, I guess, in this. Um, Caleb only joined the Confederate Army because August was joining. So I guess that was how, you know, he was kind of okay. And obviously like he has flaws uh, and really like, so do George and Isabella. Well, actually, do George and Isabella have flaws? We're coming up on my first complaint. 
I don't feel like the characters were super well written. Caleb of course has flaws and George and Isabella do as well but like as a whole I felt like the characters weren't super well written or believable maybe is is the more correct term. George and Isabella specifically they just seem to like automatically from I, and I would assume that they would have held this belief before the emancipation just because like they've already arrived here uh, at this belief that um, black people and white people are equal like we're all people which like great but it is kind of hard to believe that two white people would be able to like not have any stigmatization towards a group of people that like everybody around them that they're talking to because they don't have any friends you know that are black they don't they don't talk to anybody else that is black so they're only talking to the other white people in the town and it sounds like all of those people are either very racist or they're very and like very against emancipation or they're like kind of there you know they they've it's clear that they've grown up with these beliefs around them and some of that sticks and so it's it's very surprising to me that George and Isabella are kind of like these perfect individuals as far as beliefs go and that's not to say like they don't make mistakes or anything but it does it seems like a little bit far-fetched for the time period and I wish that there was some type of like reckoning that they had to come to terms with on their own like internally and some growth that they had to do because I, I just feel like that would have been more realistic you know like a character's not just like automatically good and does the right things and it felt like they just automatically did the right things without needing to like grow to that point. And because of that, I think I would have much preferred to have only been in Prentice and Landry's minds throughout the entire story because it was almost distracting being in their minds and being like, really like, there's nothing that you have to overcome in order to like do the exact right thing in these moments, you know? I just wish that this book if it wasn't going to be about any like internal growth with George and Isabella, then I, I just didn't feel the need to ever have, ever be in their perspective. Like we could have just as easily stuck in Prentice and Landry's perspective and just seen their story because I feel like that was more interesting than seeing it through George and Isabella's minds as well. Also, I feel like the, when you read the synopsis of this book, um, you see that it's about uh, Prentice and Landry staying with George and Isabella, but also uh, it talks about it being about um, two Confederate soldiers in a forbidden romance, that being Caleb and August. And I feel like you don't really dive much into what their relationship is much at all. Like you get like a tiny, you get basically enough information in it for you to get the feelings that I think you're supposed to get as the reader. And I won't say exactly what those are because I don't want to spoil anything. It felt like there was no real depth there to to each of them, to their relationship. And I just feel like that could have been fleshed out more. In addition to that, the pacing of this story was um, not great. Like it was incredibly slow at the beginning and then it went really fast for a little bit of time. And then it slowed down a lot at the end. And specifically at the end, it felt like there were many chapters that ended where I was like, that sentence could have been the last sentence. And that would have been like a good, like as a reader, like, oh, I wonder what happened next, but I do feel like this story has been concluded. But it just like kept stretching on like a little bit further and a little bit further to the point where you're like, well, if I don't feel like this is bringing anything else to the core story, so why is it still going? I just feel like the effort to write more could have been better placed like in the main story as a whole in order to get us to understand the characters more and to see their development through through this. I don't feel like any of the characters really changed all that much with the exception of maybe Caleb um, through the progression of this story. Yeah, I just, I found that it was a bit lacking in that. Um, that being said, I think like overall, it's a good book. Like it's, it's a good story. It's got a good plot uh, and I was, you know, pretty intrigued to find out what happens next throughout, especially once you get past like that first 
portion where it's moving pretty slowly. Um, after it got past that, I was like, oh, okay, like what's gonna happen? Uh, and then it's easier to get through the end when you know you're so close to it at that point. Um, once you get past like the part that's fast and then you get back to the area that's slower. So like overall, I do think that it's, you know, generally a good book. I don't think it's a bad book, but I just, I don't see it getting to the shortlist, which obviously at the time this video goes up, you'll know already if it's on the shortlist. Um, I, I personally don't see it making it there and um, I'm surprised to even see it on the long list, but I just don't think that there's anything that's like new or different that this book is doing or uh, I don't think it's doing what, what it is doing particularly well that would push it like that extra bit to be considered among this group of books. So with that being said, let's hear it from the Freshly Frog. Do we get a ribbit? No. Um, I feel like that was probably pretty clear by the tone of this video. Uh, it's probably usually pretty clear by the time I get to my the end of my videos whether or not um, the frog's gonna recommend it. Oh, and if you don't know, if, if you're new here, uh, the Freshly Frog um, either recommends or does not recommend reading a book based on whether or not he rivets. So uh, basically, uh, no, I don't recommend reading The Sweetness of Water. That said, like, if you enjoy this genre of books, I think that you'll enjoy this book. Um, but uh, what I would recommend in this book's place is The Water Dancer by Ta-Nehisi Coates. Uh, this was a, in the same vein of the sweetness of water uh, and about the same time period. But I think that the characters have a lot more depth to them and even like the moments that are in it have a lot more depth to them. And I, I just feel like it's a more powerful, more impactful book while still being in that same time period. Um, also, if you haven't read Between the World and Me by ta Coates, just like as a side, you should definitely read that. It's really, really good. Um, and the audiobook is read by ta Coates himself. So I always love an audiobook that's read by the author. Um, that makes me want to read it even more. And I believe now it's on HBO or something. It's somewhere. Um, they made either a series or a movie about it. I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know. Uh, but I'd recommend um, reading that as well. Just <laughs> totally side note, <laughs> just because I'm talking about ta Coats. Coates. Anyways, if you read this book, I'd love to hear your opinions on it. Uh, what did you think? Do you agree with me? Or were there parts of it that you actually did find like really um, engrossing or really like dug into aspects that you hadn't seen dug into in different books or something like that? Um, I'd love to know. But yeah, I think that that does it for this video. So I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, please do consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one. Bye.